Hello and welcome to the Bellcast, the How to Turn Your Dragon podcast. I'm your host, HC, and with me are... Rush2112. And Wolf. And today on the show, we have a big question. A debate, if you want, if you will. Because today, my two co-hosts are going to try and convince me which dragon is better. Now, just to put us out, out of the way now, we are, the, you are not going to hear the names Knight or Light Fury in this conversation because because these are the these are the easy ones, these are the obvious ones. So no one, there's no real reason to protect either, honestly, because it's the Furies. They're the best in a sense. They they are kind of OP. Therefore, I ch- I instructed my two co-hosts to choose a dragon each, and then debate and try to convince me why this dragon is better. So, guys, present your choices. Um, I'd like to accuse you of fake news there. This was my idea, and I said that we can't choose Night Furies. <laughs> you instructed us of nothing. Really? Yes. Well, it's been a week ago, I forgot. <laughs> Good excuse, I suppose. <laughs> Right. Anyway. But anyway, as Rush, uh, Rush suggested it, and, you know, obvious rule is no Night of Light Furies. So, with that said, present Because they're choices. terrible. It's, it's mm. okay. They're evil. We'll prove that in the yes. last debate. Absolutely. Unequivocally winning. <laughs> <laughs> so, I chose the Change Wing. And I chose the Storm Cutter. Okay, so change wing, storm cutter. Um, can uh, before we actually start, can you give each give like uh, the listeners a bit of where can, where did we see these uh, these dragons? Just so if people don't really know any any of the dragons by their name by the species name. So the change wing first appeared <clears throat> on. Uh, it was actually I think the book of dragon is short where they talked about the change wing. Uh, And then it constantly appeared throughout different episodes of not only Riders and Defenders of Burke, but it has been a mainstay as a wild dragon in the How to Train Your Dragon TV series. Um, The dragon... Yeah, I think think that's all. I don't know if it's been seen in a movie yet. Um, Maybe a brief mention in the first one. Um, okay, so Wolf, Stormcutter. The Stormcutter was first seen in the second movie as a cloud jumper, Valka's dragon. Mm-hmm. There you go. Okay. So we have we have a dragon we have a dragon that we've only seen as a wild one in the TV show, and we have one with actual name and and character from the movies. An interesting an interesting way to look at this therefore let's start first first of all uh, please tell me how is the design of your dragon better than the others debate i'll let you go first rush oh boy just so you can crush <laughs> me later i see yep. <clears throat> so, i'll go first on the next one uh, to be right. fair well my dragon design is quite interesting I do actually generally prefer the slimmer dragons. Um, so back when the Singe Tail came out, I thought it was a cool dragon, but it just wasn't, it was too flat bodied for me. Uh, it wasn't sleek enough. Now the change wing is not necessarily flattened out like a pancake, but it's at least uh, general, you know, the flow of the body is technically good. Um, its mouth is very narrow and long, uh, which makes it perfect for spitting out acid but we'll get to the abilities later uh and it also mm-hmm. has some nice additional they're not necessarily horns they do have horns but it's not necessarily horns they're little i don't even know what to call them antenna that allow them for extra sensing abilities okay and that's the end of wolf <laughs> wolf what do you have to say about the design of the stone cutter i mean it's an owl that's enough. Done. 
it's literally oh. designed to be like an owl. It can, its head is very much reminiscent of an owl. And it also has four wings, so done. I mean, what more could you want? Okay. Um, on the one hand, I agree that there's really not uh, not a lot more you can add about the Stormcutter. But since Ranch actually gave us an explanation about the change wing and uh, exactly how is the, how it's designed <laughs> in practice abilities, if you Rush want gets, more, Rush gets the point. <laughs> I will say I like the size of the Stormcutter. It's a very big dragon comparatively to a lot of the other dragons we see at the time. Like, even the change wing doesn't compare to the storm cutter in size, from what I can tell. And I just, I like that about it, compared to, like, Valka or any of the other riders. I like the size of the storm cutter. I love how, again, I just, I love the movements of it. It's very much owl-like in its nature. And I, and again, the four wings are a neat idea for a dragon. Mm -hmm. Okay, but still, Rush gave a better explanation <laughs> about the design. Therefore, Rush gets the point. Hallelujah. Anyway, moving on to honestly, ability... Wolf, before we move to the next one, Wolf, it's it's honestly the last argument point that's going to be our best, right? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I could. I guess I could have said the Stormcutter has tail wings like the Night Fury, the only other dragon that has them, as far as I'm aware. So, therefore, better because it's more like a Night Fury. Mm. Well, Wolf, <laughs> I have two things to say about that. One, size doesn't matter in this competition. And two, we kind of disqualify Night Furies, so you using it kind of disqualifies you in this round. All right, moving on to the <laughs> next. Making up new rules. Are you? Yeah. Okay, then. I, I am the host. I have the power. <laughs> mm. So, Wolf, why is the Cloud Jumper better than HC? Oh, I mean, well, for one, it doesn't make bad Sonic <laughs> jokes. Mm. When was the last time I did that one? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's one. Second of all, uh, let's just agree that every dragon in this franchise is better than any of us and move on. Of course, Wolf is now going to disagree with me because Wolf think he, thinks he's God, <laughs> which he's not, but I mean, whatever. You said it, not me. I said you think it I said you think you are. I didn't say you are because that would be I have never said anything and all I'm saying is you said it. Not <laughs> you're me. not you're, you're not saying it, but you're thinking it. You'll never know. I don't need to know in order to know, but before <laughs> this gets way too philosophical, let's move on to the second round. So <laughs> abilities and how you could use them. Explain to me how each dragon's abilities uh, could be used to your in your day-to-day -day routine or just in order to get around and have a good life. Rush, you started in the previous round. Do you want to take this one? Uh, I said I'd go first. Wolf so. go first yeah. Okay, Wolf, go yeah. first. I mean, again, number one, it has the Stormcutter can rotate its head. So already really cool in the fact that, you know, the Stormcutter can see behind itself whenever it wants to. A neat little thing. Maybe creepy, but I've not seen it in seen it in the movies. It didn't look creepy at all. So, yay for neat little cool cute thing. Firepower, Stormcutter's not had too much of a chance to show that off, unfortunately. But I do love the look of the fire. It's more of a like tornado rotating thing, which is cool. How could you use that? No clue. But it's fire, so you know there you go. On top of that, the Stormcutter has four different wings, so you have the ability to be able to still fly while carrying heavier stuff, potentially, which is great, unlike other dragons. And it also has hook talons, which means it can hang upside down and use them more gingerly, apparently. For things like in the movie, we see the dragon gingerly pick the lock of a dragon trap. So we see Cloud Jumper gingerly pick the lock of a dragon trap. So, you know, hey, it can pick locks. And apparently, Stormcutters are also very intelligent and can understand the difference between people and, you know, who are threats and not, as we see in the movie, between Hiccup and Valka and things of that nature. So with that intelligence, that's also a great bonus and plus. Smarter than your average dragon. <laughs> was this supposed to be a reference? Uh, the, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yogi Bear. Yes, it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it has... 
It has TJ Miller in it, so I guess that fits. Hmm? Not the new one. Yeah, uh, no, whatever. No, no, no. <laughs> not the CGI. No. Ugh. Anyways. It's not like the original was a masterpiece, guys. Let's. What it does it matter? But, anyways, moving on. It's an old cartoon show. What do you want? Anyway, um, <laughs> so abilities. Oh boy. What can't the change wing do? The change wing can camouflage itself. And this is in full invisibility. So how would we use this? Well, if I'm flying on the back of my change wing, I just lay down and it camouflages itself against the sky. So we are flying undetected above. Easy. You can spit acid. You're in jail. It camouflages itself and spits some acid on those bars and you're out of there. There's an unruly host who doesn't want to give you your point. Spits acid on him. You win. I appreciate a little nod at the end. No. That was Rush. a threat, not a nod. I'm going to say, though, going invisible, how do we know it makes you invisible? I said it doesn't go invisible. It camouflages itself. Hmm. Hmm. It's been described as going as camouflage. Therefore, the ability is camouflage. Uh, Look, we can save the counterpoints for later, <laughs> but I'm going off what they've told us. I know. Anyway, so Rush did uh, demonstrate some really good things about the change wing and how you could use it in order to either get away from uh, from you know bad situations or threaten your host <laughs> to give you points. <laughs> now. On the one hand, uh, that's that's the one end. On the other hand, we have Wolf, who actually gave us a lot, a lot of a lot of uh, good insight about the um, Stormcutter's um, abilities, um, abilities and how you could use them. Therefore, just because he went a bit, bit, bit in, into more detail, and because I want to show Rush his threats, do, don't fight at me. Wolf gets the point. Well, if I had brought up the fact that you could do stealth missions, but for some reason I forgot to mention that. But I will I will concede mm. the point because I did not bring up that point. I won't be like I mean, Wolf and retroactively fair. try and get a point back. To be fair, I, HC's only giving me the point just to make it a little bit more tense at the end. Shoot these up to me! <laughs> because people care. <laughs> Don't worry, Wolf. I'll spit some acid on him. I've already Fair lost enough. the point. There's no reason to not threaten him anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I should definitely lose if that was the case, considering everything I've done in the past and now. Mm. <laughs> Honestly, it's amazing we made it this far without actually killing each other, but that's another story. Because we're not in the Mostly same Mostly you. Hmm. Uh, considering the fact how many times you two killed Stuick, I... <laughs> We didn't kill. We, we just choke. We didn't There's kill a him. The uh, Night Fury that we can't, you know, choose in here killed him. That's you why he's the name best him, dragon. You know you... If you name it, it gives it power, HC. Uh, give, me a second, uh, killer. give me a second. Here's my notebook. What have I done? There you go. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. <laughs> So the one the one thing every every dragon in this franchise has for the most part is a, is a wild personality. So you know this is going to be an interesting one because Wolf has a dragon that we actually see interact with other dragons and humans, and Rush just has uh, chose a wild dragon, which is most mostly quote unquote <clears throat> evil. Again, quote unquote lack of ability. Term. Therefore, this is going to be an interesting one. I think you're confusing this... evil with wild. Obstacle. I said yeah. wild at the beginning. Yeah, it's which was yeah. why I said obstacle. It's like it's not evil. It's just again, it's being a uh, you know, it's a dragon. It's doing what yeah, it would normally do, which is being territorial. A, also, yeah, you're forgetting way back in Defenders of Burke where we saw a friendly change wing, and I'm helping Rush here, by the way. Yes. I was so uh, okay, you are stopping now. No help in the competition. 
but anyway, I was I, I was going to bring that up, but I wanted to go through a whole character arc of the Changeling. Now, it's not always the same okay. exact Changeling, but we can okay, see... Okay, so uh, just uh, just let me finish introducing the round, please, and then you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, please like discuss... <laughs> please discuss how your dragon's personality is better than the other. So, Rush, you want to say, go ahead. I don't want to anymore. <laughs> don't blame you. Oh, love of. Anyway. Okay. I will go. Just playing it for comedic effect. Something HC wouldn't understand. Um. Shut the hell up. Uh, I told you, HC. I'm spitting that? acid at you right now, man. Um. Anyway. So the personality. Now, when we first get introduced to the change wing, let's not say in the Book of Dragons, because that was. Uh, the change wing and that was con was curious and it didn't attack him outright, which is necessarily what change wings are. But when we get their first introduction in the actual um, Riders of Burke and Defenders of Burke, they're quite aggressive to other dragons. They're territorial and they don't like other dragons, except for when Snotlout, uh, we get the friendly change wing that takes Snotlout from Hookfang and kind of just plays with him. So it seems like we're getting somewhere with the change wings, and then we get to the uh, sorry, race to the edge, where change wings are generally seen as not necessarily aggressive anymore, but they just are there. Sometimes when they need the acid for it, you know, the change wings do its own thing. They surprise the change wing, of course it attacks. It's a little skittish. Um, now I didn't bring this up in abilities because it could have been used against me, although I didn't win anyway. So the change wing doesn't necessarily have its own scale armor. That's why it uses camouflage. So it's, you know, it makes sense that it would be skittish and somewhat aggressive to make sure it didn't get hurt. But then we get to the whole, uh, the migration of change wings. As Hiccup said, if you don't mess with them, if you leave them alone, they won't bother you. That's totally my personality. Mm -hmm. Don't bother me. Okay. Leave me alone. So we get the final understanding that change wings aren't necessarily aggressive per se. They just don't want to be messed with. Mm -hmm. So basically every college student ever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wolf. Um, I would say yeah, like kind of what we see from the movie uh, Stormcutters can potentially uh, from Cloud Jumper. Stormcutters could potentially be, you know, we know for a fact they're fairly intelligent, and they're definitely very proud. Uh, Stormcutter, at the very least, is proud and confident. So we would, I would assume, some of that might translate over to some of the other Stormcutters and things of that nature. But uh, and you know, we see Cloud Jumper be very sweet and friendly. Maybe that transfers over to other Stormcutters. Again, I'm going off of what we see from Cloud Jumper, so it could be somewhat up in the air potentially. But uh, I, I would say that suits me fairly well. Proud, confident, but sweet and friendly at times. Hmm. Okay. And quite curious. There you go. Okay, so based on that, I think that personality Wolf described is a bit friendlier and a bit more easy to get along with. But then again, I have to say that the way Rush described the change wing felt very relatable to the to the college student that is me and probably every other college student who is listening to this. Therefore, for real, because of how relatable Rush made the change wing, Rush gets the point. How's that? Wow, thanks for the enthusiasm there, HC. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, do you want that more enthusiastic? I can do more enthusiastic. Just ask. Hmm. Maybe I will. Maybe for announcing the winner. Okay. And let's have it for the winner. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, last category. Since uh, both, both of you knew what a dragon the other caster is choosing, Wolf knew that Rush is going to choose the change wing, and Rush knew that Wolf is going to choose the stone cutter, then how is your dragon superior to the other dragon's weakness? Like, Rush, explain how the change wing is better than the stone cutter's uh, flaw and wolf you do the same thing on the opposite <laughs> since rush started the previous round wolf goes first um 
I guess the immediate thing to point out is we haven't seen one trained yet. That's it? <laughs> I mean, oh, I figured it'd be okay. a back and forth. Not just keep going. Okay, keep going. Well, I mean, um, I have nothing one. to say against that. Like, yeah, we haven't seen one trained yet. So what? <laughs> oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. the tables have turned. You got me. Um, yeah, I, I'm surprised you didn't mention ability thing here. Like, you can use the change wing skills as like actual cloths of, you know, for you know, like separated Wolf, from. You wing, are against the change wing, not is, in, not support. Like, it. You, I forgot about that too, though, so don't feel bad. From the. You forgot from the, the separation uh, like a, from the uh, race to the edge episode. Yeah, race to the edge when oh. when uh, they use the change wing skin as actual cloak of invisibility. Yes. yes. Yeah. Don't know how that works, but sure. <laughs> yeah. Um. It, going to the invisibility thing though, like how does that work exactly? Is it invisibility? Is it camouflage? And would it work on you if you were on the change wing and stuff of like like that nature? Like if you had a saddle on the change wing, would that work? So what um, I'm assuming be, to your counterpoint there. Uh, is that it is, even though we've seen that weird th part of Race of the Edge, I still would like to assume it's camouflage because not only do they keep talking about it, but when Toughnut does his camouflage, he does it because of the change wing. He's not saying I'm invisible. He's saying I'm camouflaging because of the change wing. Um, and yes, I know it's kind of interesting how they always do it so perfectly, but that's what happens when you have, you know, years of practice i guess um one thing to think about is if they were invisible can they make their organs invisible is it just their skin well obviously something has to be you know now you're getting too deep into exactly. it exactly so i'm saying that's why it's not invisibility <laughs> it's camouflage fair enough i'll let that one go i guess one thing to bring up though is acid how would you deal with that even if it drools a little that's going to be a bad day in your house potentially hmm brush its teeth constantly i mean still could drool though nine out of ten doctors recommend <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to have a really good toothbrush mm -hmm. considering mm -hmm. bristles. but uh yeah. but honestly to deal <laughs> with acid i mean it's not like it's the alien from alien where if you accidentally you know where the acid will continually burn through layers and layers of floor as we saw from uh snotlout's helmet when he got acid spit on it it didn't actually burn through the helmet too quickly it's more of something that is although i i feel like they can control the concentration because we've seen it burn through stuff very quickly so that may have been just a warning shot to get him out and i feel like maybe you could argue that there's drool is is acid um it would probably be a lower concentration because I'm guessing their drool is still somewhat water watery as well, so it mixes with the acid and dilutes it. So yes, there okay. would still be an issue of acid drill, but it wouldn't be the strongest stuff. Okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. But um, you forgot one little bit about this. Mm-hmm. How is this better than the Stormcutter? You... Well, I was letting him give his points to me, okay? <laughs> okay, I see. Fair, fair strategy. Please consult me next time you're about to do that so that Wolf won't necessarily give you the answers. <laughs> okay. But, any, well... but, anyway, but anyway, back to the round for a second. But bonus points for, for this because I, I actually... <laughs> enjoyed imagining the change wing as a house pet one last thing i'll point out it seems like when changelings <laughs> when change wings get threatened injured or scared they can't control their color changes so that could be an issue if you wanted to do any sneaking you'd have to be aware wary, aware of that and careful maybe in the initial stages but i think so yes we, nobody's trained to change wing but I, th I feel like by training the dragon you give them a bond because let's talk about when we see all of the the uh, like hook fang and stuff or fang hook i guess for gustav when they before they train them they're scared all the time they are a little bit more aggressive but then they get trained they have somebody to be with them they're a little bit more mellow they have a trust bond 
and then they've also been taught to do some things. So I feel like you could train that out. I won't. I will agree that that's possible about happening in the early stages, but I think you can train that out. Okay. Fair enough. Then that is all I've got. So, you HC made an <coughs> interesting thing. Now I was going to bring this up earlier, but he put it in a good way. House pet. Imagining it as a house pet. Wolf, do you live in a mansion? Nope. <laughs> how are you gonna? Nice. How are you gonna fit that massive dragon in your house? Or how are you gonna give it a place to stay? Don't have to. Live on the road. That may be sustainable for Valka, but <laughs> you and your internet, you need it. Laptop can travel. Good to go. Where would you charge it? <clears throat> You just stop over at places. The dragon can stay on the roof of the building and go up there and <laughs> hang out with it. Uh, and crash through the ceiling? No. It is quite a it massive dragon. <clears throat> you're talking about the buildings of apart. You're talking about apartment building roofs here. Okay. Like travel to cities. Fly to cities <laughs> whenever you want, wherever you want to go, always on the road. That'd be great. Traveling around, that'd be great. Okay. <laughs> Right, so you're not worried about it getting stuck anywhere because you're going to be outside constantly. Um, how are you going to provide food for this? I know on the road, will it catch it itself? Are you going to be illegal stealing? I mean, lakes exist, oceans exist. Eat some fish. It's what they do in the movies. So why can't I do, do it too? Just... Eat the same fish <laughs> every single day. Fish is good for you. Fish are friends, not food. Well. Just make sure you won't stop by the poisonous water. I heard the fish in there are not so good for humans. And I'm assuming dragons. Dragons have larger make livers. <clears throat> okay. <Potential>. Um, <laughs> tornado fire. You said it's cool, but what's its real use? Sure, you have fire every night. But how are you going to get out of sticky situations? I mean, if you saw a tornado coming at you that was on fire as well, I think that would be scary enough in any sticky situation to just scare people away. Well, what if you're in jail? What can it do? Sure, it can pick the locks of dragon traps, but can it pick the locks of human traps? I mean, it's big enough. I think it could just tear down the wall. Fair enough. Fair or the enough. roof. Or the roof. <laughs> Or the entire house, you know. Yeah, it's a small difference. Uh, now, you say it has sharp talons <laughs> that can hang upside down. What happens if it accidentally cuts you or something like that? Those are some pretty, pretty large talons. Those would hurt. Probably. Fair enough. I see your well, point. certainly would. <laughs> I can't, can't say anything to that. It probably would definitely seriously hurt. Fix it up, go on. Unless it kills me. In which case... Oh, uh, I doubt that would happen, though. Again, if you're training, and I think you could be careful with that. Okay. I have two more points. Um, let's go with the first one, because it's a little bit more sensible. So it's four wings. You say it can be used for a greater power of flight. And I agree, it could, if they weren't overlapped. It seems like there's a very, very aerodynamic challenge with the fact that they're overlapped. You don't get necessarily double the flight power. So you don't necessarily get double the lifting capacity or more lifting capacity. It seems like those wings interfere with each other. Do they? I don't know. I cannot tell you. I would assume no, but I'm biased. <laughs> right. All right, moving on to the final <laughs> point. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> final point. You said this dragon is very intelligent, correct? No. Yeah. What if it becomes too intelligent and overthrows you? Then it deserves it. But hope. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> wow, this is new. This is new. I'm tired of you giving me a crap response. Well, just give me a full response. I was going to finish. Okay. I was going to finish. I know. I actually had you in. I lifted my mouse as soon as you uh, started talking. So, 
Anyway. I mean, through training, right? Even if it is an intelligent dragon, you would hope through the training that like you would become friends, you would become close with one another, and it would care enough, <clears throat> and you would care enough about it that you know that wouldn't be an issue, anyways. Yes, but right? Wolf, in your previous argumentative series against the Night Fury, what if it's its plan all along just to act like your friend? Then again, it deserves it because it did a swell job of it. That's fine to say right now when it hasn't happened, but I think you'll be sorry when it does happen. Oh, sure, but I won't be around anymore, so that's okay. <clears throat> All right, well, there you go. And as always, I happily accept our new dragon overlords. <laughs> well, um, anything else you want to say for this uh, discussion? I got nothing. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, <clears throat> the, fin the final word. I will say this. Wolf has indeed brought up some interesting counterpoints to Russia's, um, to Russia's uh, questions. And I will say his choice to live his life on the road is very interesting, intriguing, and he has some creative solutions. However... Most of his answers came off as avoiding the question, giving answers that practically mean, um, no, this, this doesn't work like this, here's my way. And, so, and, his ways, and his ways I saw as cowardly and running away from the question. Rush actually stood up, fought and brought up legit points, therefore Rush takes the point, therefore I'm totally not biased, Therefore, Rush is the winner. Hallelujah. I don't feel enthusiastic like enough. No. Well, what can you do? We can't <laughs> get everything we want, do we? Like how Wolf didn't win. I don't think he wanted to win. He didn't want it enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take his silence <laughs> as confirmation for the fact he didn't want to win. Or, or maybe he's trying to get the stonecutter, the stonecutter out of his house. I don't know. I already overthrew him and killed him. Could be any of those things. Who knows? Oh shit, he's alive. It's a, it's a ghost. Ah. It's the stonecutter. It's emulated his voice. It is smart enough. Well, with that said, so Rush won, Wolf didn't. Any <laughs> any closing thoughts about this competition? I got nothing. This was fun. <laughs> it's always fun to do little <laughs> little neat things like this, and we hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, with that said, this and this and this is it for this episode of the Bellcast. We hope you enjoyed. One dragon that you prefer, the um, Changewing, the Stormcutter, something completely different that is not a Night or a Light Fury. Let us know all about this in the comment section below, on our Tumblr, which is Belkast Steam, on our Twitter, which is Belkast with a capital B, capital C, and you can find all of us on the How to Train Dragon Valhalla Discord server. Have you seen How to Train Dragons in the Hidden World yet? Feel free to contact me about this, because I'm the only one out of those three who saw it this far. I'm uh, seeing far. it next week. Woohoo! So wait a week and then talk to me and Rush about it. So with that said, I was HC. I was Rush. And I've been Wolf. And we will see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.